This little device is currently banned by the sports governing body. Pro cyclists are not allowed to use it in competition. The reason given was that it's thought to have the power to change the outcome of races. However, we can use it as much as we like, as can pros in training. So what actually is it? What can it do? And if it does have the power to influence racing, how can we use it to cycle further and faster? Let's dive in. There are many metrics that we can use to analyze our performance on the bike. We have power, heart rate, even sweat rate, and core body temperature. And now, thanks to tech from Super Sapiens, we can even monitor our blood glucose data 24 seven. So how does the Super Sapiens system work and why is it proving so useful? Firstly, the glucose data is collected via the Abbott Libra Glucose Sport Biosensor, a small patch which is stuck just to the back of your upper arm. Now, that patch contains a thin, flexible filament which inserts itself just below the skin when fitted. The sensor analyzes the interstitial fluid which surrounds the cells of the tissues below your skin, allowing glucose levels to be monitored in real time 24-7. Now, each sensor costs 65 euros or 57 pounds sterling if bought as part of a monthly subscription package. The biosensor transfers all glucose data to an app on your phone. Those with Garmin can relay that data to their device so they can see on screen their blood glucose levels in the same way they could as their power and heart rate data. There's also said to be integrations with other third-party head units like Wahoo. So you can always see that glucose data as you're riding in real time. Now, Super Sapiens themselves are said to be releasing a wristband. So whatever option you go for, you can constantly keep your blood glucose levels visible. Those with diabetes watching this will already know this is a very useful tool. Indeed, this is life-changing tech for those suffering with the condition. But in terms of performance, why is it so valuable to see your glucose levels in real time? Why have the likes of Ineos, Jumbo Visma, Canyon Schramm, Anna van der Breggen all jumped on this tech for their training from the get-go? Well, to explain, it's time for a bit of GCN Does Science. Sorry, sorry, scientist coming, I'm late, I'm late, sorry, scientist on his way. Here's the wheelie for the lateness. Woohoo! Anyway, when we eat carbohydrates, they are broken down in the body to glucose and fructose, then passed into the bloodstream and shuttled around the body to where they're needed most. Our vital organs and our muscles, lots of them, of course. Whew. Therefore, when we eat, our blood glucose levels spike. If we don't need this excess energy, then a hormone is released, insulin. Now this helps to store that excess glucose in the muscles and liver, our body's fuel tank, so to speak. If our blood glucose levels drop, our liver can release glucose back into the blood to be used by the muscles. When we ride our bikes, our bodies perform a careful balancing act to maintain our blood glucose levels in an optimal range. The problem is it can only work with what's provided. If we fail to refill or fill the tank correctly, we can run into problems and we aren't able to supply the right amount of glucose to the muscles then it's knitted must. Is it something I said? And the person in charge of all this is um, you, me. We decide when we should eat based on hunger and our current understanding of scientific knowledge. And sometimes, well, often, this goes wrong, doesn't it? I mean, we've all hit the wall at one point or another, but now, thanks to Super Sapiens, we can see our blood glucose levels measured in milligrams per deciliter. For context, most people have a glucose in the range of 70 to 180 milligrams per deciliter, depending on the time of the day. So now we can see how our glucose is changing throughout the day, when it's spiking, when it's plateauing, but most importantly, when it's dropping. Super Sapiens say no more guesswork, no more stabs in the dark. This is full insight into the inner workings of our body when we push ourselves to our limits. Essentially, this is what seems to have caused the UCI to get so scared and ban its use in competition. Worried that it will cause more F1 style racing. Their words, not mine. 
Mick Rogers, the UCI's Tech Innovations Manager, has been quoted as saying that putting such powerful data in the hands of younger riders is essentially taking away a skill and that this technology does have the power to change the outcome of a race. Now, whether you agree with that or not, pros will have to stay in the dark regarding their glucose levels during races. But, put those lights back on, they can still use it during training, we can use it whenever we want, and there's plenty of features that you can make the most of aside from racing. How we respond to certain foods is a big one here. You Super Sapiens for long enough and you have collected a whole heap of data viewable on their app. Here you can see your blood glucose levels across a whole time frame. You can note your meal times and also when you were riding. As a result, you can easily see the impact this has on your blood glucose levels and therefore observe how you respond to certain foods. Is that banana you eat for a snack really the best option? Or does it give you a huge spike in blood glucose and then a subsequent crash later on? Actually, I found when using Super Sapiens that potatoes gave me my biggest spike in blood glucose, which was something I wasn't really expecting, to be honest. Either way, all this information gives you the knowledge to change your diet for the better, allowing you to feel more energized throughout the day. Glucose variability is a function within the app which allows you to analyze your data and see how much your blood glucose peaks and troughs. The thought is that you can use this to make an informed decision about learning what to eat and when to create a more sustainable and stable energy supply. Super Sapiens also helps you understand your average glucose levels and your total daily glucose exposure. Now, this is useful if you want to carbo load in the build up to a big event, for example, or perhaps you want to sustainably lose weight and reduce your glucose levels by five to 10 milligrams per deciliter to the usual. Understanding your glucose performance zone is a key part to this tech. So the idea is that you go out and you do a 30 minute max effort when fresh. Afterwards, you analyze your glucose levels, see where they were sitting throughout that effort intensity. And then for subsequent efforts, you can try and keep your blood glucose levels in the same range, making sure you can make the most out of your body's performance by fueling correctly. Instead of trying to second guess your body and replace carbs when you think you should, maybe going off conventional wisdom, now you have the power to track your glucose levels in real time, keeping yourself in that golden performance zone where you perform best. Trending down and out of that zone, time to top up, get some food in before it's too late. The key point is that everybody's bodies are different when it comes to nutrition. Do you perform best when you consume 60, 90, 120, or even upwards of 140 grams of carbohydrates per hour? Can you maximize your performance if you manage to bump up your blood glucose levels from 120 to 140 milligrams per deciliter? These are the sort of questions that the Super Sapien system can help answer. And that is how best to think of this little sensor. Like power and heart rate, it won't ride our bikes for us, but it is a tool which will help us to answer questions which we may have found hard to decipher. And with integrations with the likes of Training Peaks to come, we will increasingly see blood glucose on a ride data chart next to power, heart rate, distance, and time. The sort of data sets we look at when we try and improve our performance on the bike in order to ride further and faster than ever before. So it is gonna be interesting to see if the UCI changed their tune on this one. What do you think though? What would you see in your own blood glucose levels? And what do you make of the UCI banning this tech? Let us know down in the comments section. I'll be really interested to hear your own thoughts. And as always, thanks for watching. My glucose levels are currently, currently dropping actually, so time to top them up. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching everyone.